And thank you for you guys being patient um, and waiting for us. To, um, you know, we wanted to start at 3.30, and unfortunately, uh, we got a little behind schedule. Um, the Sheriff's Office has some initial comments, and then uh, I'm going to make a statement, and then you're going to hear from the superintendent from West Liberty, um, and then we um, will entertain um, some questions. Questions if you have them. Good afternoon. Thank you for you guys being patient um, and waiting for us. To, um, you know, we wanted to start at 3:30, and unfortunately, uh, we got a little behind schedule. Um, the sheriff's office has some initial comments, and then uh, I'm going to make a statement, and then you're going to hear from the superintendent from West Liberty, um, and then we um, will entertain. Um, some questions if you have them. Uh, so I'll introduce the Sheriff at this point in time, Sheriff Matt Melvin. Hi, and thank you for your patience. I'll reiterate that. Uh, at approximately uh, 7.36 a.m. this morning, Champaign County 911 Center received a 911 call of an active shooter at West Liberty High School. Uh, at approximately 7.41 hours, Champaign County deputies along with West Liberty Police Department, Ohio State Highway Patrol, cleared the building. Uh, at that time, they took in one male subject, also believed to be the shooter, the lone shooter, was 17 years old, a student at the school. While the investigation is still ongoing, I can report that we are confident there is only one suspect shooter, and that suspect is in custody. Mm -hmm. The investigation will be ongoing for many days to come. I do want to take the opportunity to thank some other law enforcement agencies that reached out to us. Uh, the Champaign County Sheriff's Office would like to thank uh, Union County Sheriff's Office, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, Logan County Sheriff's Office, Ohio State Highway Patrol, Clark County Sheriff's Office, and uh, West Liberty Police Division, also the Rana Police Division. Uh, special agents from BCI and I, along with the Attorney General Mike DeWine. I'd just like to thank those people. At this time, I turn it over to Prosecutor Kevin Talevi. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, I just want to say I'm, I'm very pleased with the um, manner and professionalism in which the Sheriff's Office has been handling the investigation um, and the assistance we've gotten from agents from BCI. Um, I want to reiterate to all of you, the investigation is ongoing, and it will be ongoing for many days to come. Uh, because of that, um, we will not be able to answer some of the questions that some of you, I anticipate many of you will have regarding specific conduct of the suspect. Um, we're limited in some of the information that we can provide because we need to preserve the integrity of the investigation. Um, as the sheriff indicated, um, there is a suspect who is in custody. It is a juvenile. That suspect is currently being housed at a juvenile detention facility. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the court, um, it's my understanding that the court is going to hold a juvenile detention hearing, uh, which will be held on Monday. That means that uh, uh, this person will appear in front of one of the judges from the Champaign County Juvenile Court, and I believe that that hearing is scheduled to take place on Monday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, Regarding the victim, I know earlier today there were questions. Um, many of you had asked uh, the nature of his injuries and his prognosis. Um, uh, the superintendent, um, who will be speaking in just a moment, I know has spoken with the family, and I believe he has some information regarding the status of the victim. Um, but he is alive, and um, he is receiving medical treatment, as I understand it. Um, uh, the family's um, encouraged. Um, by what they've been, what they've heard, and I think uh, the superintendent will be able to provide you some additional information in that regard. I can also tell you, um, I was very impressed with the rapid response of law enforcement and our emergency medical service providers. Uh, their professionalism and their dedication to their jobs is impressive, and we are very fortunate to have these individuals serving our community. I also want to mention, very importantly, I think it's important for me to, to mention the school officials, the parents, and especially the students at West Liberty Salem. I was so very impressed with all of you. 
Our community should really be proud of all of you. Your patience, your understanding, and your consideration for each other and for those of us involved in the investigation was impressive and appreciated. That completes my comments. Uh, before we take questions, um, the superintendent for West Liberty will be making a statement. Craig? Thank you. Hi, I am uh, Craig Hissong, the superintendent of West Liberty State Local Schools. And uh, today uh, we had a tragic situation at the school, which you are all aware of. Um, right as the uh, school day was beginning, we had a student uh, that uh, shot uh, another student at our school. Uh, that student's name is Logan Cole, the one who was shot. Um, the family has uh, wished me to tell you that he is in critical but stable condition. And at this point, they are encouraged uh, by, um, by where he is at at this point. Um, uh, he is being uh, uh, hospitalized right now in um, uh, Nationwide Children's in Columbus. Um, the, uh, the situation today, uh, I think, just requires a whole lot of thank yous to the people who were involved. Uh, I'd first like to thank my staff and my students who uh, did what they were trained to do today, which was follow uh, ALICE protocol. And uh, when faced in a situation uh, like this, we're able to respond and keep uh, a majority of our students safe. And I think it's that quick response that they had uh, in that uh, lockdown situation uh, that really helped to uh, contain this from being worse than it is. Um, the uh, also thanks to our families uh, and community. Um, it took us about two and a half hours to start getting students uh, reunified with their families. And that seems like forever if you're a parent waiting at your car uh, for your child to come out of the school after something like this. Uh, for us, it, it went really quick. Um, but all of that was in an effort to make sure that everyone was returned and, and uni reunified with their family safely. And uh, uh, I thank them for their patience, and uh, I uh, also want to thank just our community and our families for all the kind support. Uh, we have received various texts and emails from businesses, school districts around the area, um, and, uh, and from far away, uh, basically, uh, you know, sending their best wishes to us and their thoughts and prayers. So that's been uh, very helpful uh, as they support us through this. Uh, last, I want to thank... Uh, uh, Sheriff Matt Melvin uh, and the Sheriff's Department for their quick response. Uh, you know, that can seem like forever sometimes when you're waiting for uh, people to show up, but today it felt very quick. Um, they were on the scene and, and, uh, and immediately uh, took over, really, uh, helping us to make sure everything was secure and immediately uh, had things under control. So that was a, a great situation. Uh, also, thanks to all the other first responder agencies, which I'm not going to go through and list them because I'll leave one off for sure, but uh, you know, all of our local uh, fire and police uh, that came and, and supported us today, uh, helped us to direct traffic uh, while students were being picked up at Lions Park. All of those things are critical in helping us in this type of situation and, and uh, helped us to uh, just uh, be able to have a successful uh, end to this tragic day and and uh, uh, we're really pleased with the fact of how our community is to be beside us. That's all I have at this time. We can take a few questions. Can you speak to how law enforcement was able to neutralize the threat you know, with a peaceful ending without any use of force? Um, I think the sheriff's office might be able to. Well, well actually the school officials played a great role in that. Uh, upon our arrival, they had the threat neutralized. They had him pinned out on the ground, and he was taken in custody from that point. So yeah. there were educators who absolutely actively yes, put absolutely. Hands on. Can you explain that to us? I know you don't want to release a lot of detail, but it sounds like the educators may have been the ground. They were absolutely. I mean, they went in there with an armed suspect and. Uh, neutralize that threat. So, were students involved in that process as well, or just teachers? Uh, just staff. Yes. Yeah. yes. We heard that there might have been a janitor involved with that. Can you confirm? Uh, that's part of staff. So, 
I would say. Sheriff, what can you tell us about the gun? Is this a single handgun? Is this an assault rifle? Is there anything you can say about that? Uh, it was a shotgun. shotgun. Yeah. So all shotgun, full length shotgun. That I do not know, but I know that it was a shotgun. Do you have any indication there was intent to harm more <coughs> students? I would say if it was uh, not for the reaction from the st school staff, our deputies being there so quickly that uh, there would have been more wounded. Absolutely. We know the shooter was a 17-year-old. Was this a junior, senior? Was he? Do we know? Uh, I believe he's a senior. Do we know was this intent to harm that individual that he ended up shooting, or was he after somebody else that? I believe the victim was probably a, a random victim. I, I think his intent was to har harm more. Yes, I, I do believe that. Superintendent, someone who knows this student without getting into specifics, can you just describe your reaction to the events as they unfolded this morning? I, I guess the question. So many parents, so many students are asking, did anyone see this coming? Have there been any issues, any red flags? Yeah, I, I think a lot of us have played that through our minds a lot today. And, uh, you know, no, there really, there really haven't been any kind of indications that anything like this was going to occur. Um, I think that's a question that we're going to continue to investigate uh, to see if there was anything at all that could have tipped us off for something like this. But uh, I think a lot of times, in situations like this, we want to figure out the direct answer for why things happen, and I'm not sure at this point we have one, but uh, 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 we're certainly going to look into it, and that'll be certainly part of the investigation. You've collaborated together for active shooter training. When did you most recently do that? What are you teaching your kids? Clearly, it's get away if you can. We had a, uh, a very in-depth training with our staff two years ago on ALICE training, and where the Sheriff's Department came out um, and worked with us uh, for, for many hours. I think it actually lasted almost a whole school day on, on how to handle an active shooter situation. And that's when we became familiar with Alice. And uh, uh, instead of doing just our traditional lockdown uh, without going into all of it, uh, Alice basically promotes you to actively combat and fight back also so that you're not just passively waiting for help, but you're actively trying to protect others. So. That's, that's a piece I think that really came into play today. Uh, I noticed that as I walked past classrooms after the day was over, and there were many that were still barricaded, and, and uh, uh, that was all because of our students and our staff who responded quickly, so that was a good thing. Mr. Superintendent, does the school have metal detectors? The no. What are the plans for the students in the aftermath? Do you have, I mean, considering Canceling school on Monday. What, what are your plans? Well, at this point, we know that all you know activities are canceled for this evening and over the weekend. Um, it's really going to take some time for uh, the sheriff's department to complete their investigation, and uh, and then we'll determine whether or not we can get back to school uh, and what day this week. I, you know, we do assume to get back into session uh, as soon as we can, but we also want to make sure that we're ready for the students to come back. Um, other important. Uh, things that will take place, of course, are some uh, trauma counseling and those types of things because uh, of what the staff and the students have been through. So we're going to want to make sure that we have uh, things in place to uh, identify uh, and, and help students who might be struggling with that or staff uh, from today's events. To the sheriff and the superintendent, we talked to some students today that said that they kicked out windows and ran through the cornfields to... Do you encourage that? Is that part of the plan to get out and fight or flee? Right. Yeah, that's that's part of Alice's training is that uh, instead of staying locked in a lockdown location, if you're near a situation and there's a safe exit out, in this case our plan and our building uh, plans is to exit out windows if you can. And at that point we ask them to, to flee the scene and, and find a safe spot. In this case that was what happened. They left the scene, they went to a neighboring property and and uh, uh, that's that was part of part of the plan. That was exactly what was supposed to happen. Sure. Where in the building was the shooting? I'm sorry. Where in the building was the shooting? Was part of the bathroom? Uh, uh, sheriff can talk to that one. It it was a public area, so it was not designated one area, a hallway, a common area. Common area, a hallway. You're also saying, you're saying it was a hallway, common yes, area. Yeah. We also heard that there may have been multiple gunshots. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Was the student? I understand he's. 
critically unstable condition, according to the family. Was he shot one time or was he shot multiple times? Uh, <coughs> I, I believe he was shot more than one time. Did you give up his age and grade? Look, I did not. Did, can you he was a 16-year-old and he's a junior. And Prosecutor, back to your, um, your suspect that's in custody. You know, as you're aware, there's no law that protects a juvenile's name. He's in custody. He's got a court date set Monday. Are you intentionally not telling us who he is? Can you share that name with us? I mean, at, at this point, with regards to juvenile suspects, um, we've always had the policy of um, keeping those names confidential. There is a process by which I think the media can go through in order to get those names released, but at this point in time, I'm not prepared to release that information. Sheriff, we know you were at the 17-year-old's home um, investigating. Have you figured out whose weapon this was? Was this his gun? Was it his parents? Did you, do we know anything about that at this point? We are actually still on scene there, so right. I, I, no, I don't know at this time. Did any of the staff members use a weapon to do their subduing? Not that I'm aware. Okay. No. Do you have federal agencies involved here for any reason today? Uh, the FBI did reach out <coughs> and uh, respond to the scene. Sure. We've heard that the student walked in on the gunman when he was loading the weapon. Was that, is that accurate? As he was loading the weapon, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. If I could, I, mean, I know there's a the desire to get some very specific details as to what happened in a step-by-step, blow-by-blow process. Please understand this, this crime took place this morning. It's still actively being investigated, and um, you know the sheriff's office uh, has interviewed a number of different students and different witnesses, staff. There's physical evidence that's been collected, and so we need to. We're not trying to hide anything from you, but we need to go slowly, and that's why we can't release some of the details of um, what occurred on a blow-by-blow -blow basis. Do you think that Logan Cole's a hero? Do you think that him kind of escalating this at first? before that shooter kind of had free reign to do whatever he may have done. Do you think that because this happened before the shooter was ready, that this prevented a, a much larger tragedy? Um, for a number of different reasons, which I'm not going to go into, I will say that we are fortunate, as tragic as this situation is, we are very, very fortunate. It could have been much worse. And I'm very, very thankful that as bad as it is, it, it didn't escalate to a much more um, tragic incident um, for a number of different issues. And, and again, I can't go into all the details. Can but you elaborate uh, a little bit? Did he have more ammunition? Did he have more weapons? Did he have a backpack full I of think you guys heard. I think you guys heard about some of those details um, from the superintendent, just the conduct of um, the students and the staff and law enforcement. Um, speaking in very general terms, uh, but for their conduct, um, this could have been much worse. Can you tell us about Logan? Is he an athlete? Is he quiet? Is he? Uh, he's a really good kid. Um, I, I'm not at liberty to say a whole lot more than that, but uh, he's a great student and a, and a real positive person to have in our school system. And our hearts are out with his family right now, and our and with him as he's trying to recover from this. Superintendent, anything you want to say about, are you, are you proud of your, your staff, of, of the, the folks that were there at the school, the ones that probably jumped in the line of fire or had that, had that chance to kind of end that threat? Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of our staff and the, and the measures they took in this case. Um, uh, this is something like we've said now several times, it could have been much worse than it was if, if we hadn't responded quickly uh, and uh, we're really pleased with how everybody responded. Everybody, whether they were right there or, or even just down the hall, I mean, there's uh, everybody was doing what they needed to do on this day, and, and uh, can't ask for more than that. Did you have any disciplinary trouble with the shooter before, or anything, or anything, you know, that would be? Uh, that's not something I can say at this time. Um, nothing significant, though. Can you guys comment on what the BTI is going to be doing, how they're going to be handling the investigation from this point forward? Or Part of the investigation. BCI has been great. Like I say, they're assisting us. They're assisting us with uh, the crime scene, uh, search warrants, and uh, some cyber stuff. So they have agents from all those bureaus to help us. Search warrants for car, phone, home as well? Sure, yeah.
Mm -hmm. Was that his white Jeep that I saw that I passed on the way up here on his way to BCI? More than likely. Was it a direct shooting, or did it go through any, anything else, like a wall or a door or anything? I, I'm not going to go into those details right now. Has there ever been a, a, any other incident like this before in the past here in this community? In Champaign County? Not that I'm aware of. And uh, back off that, like, what was the reactions of the parents like there? Like, can you tell us a little something about that? Like, I was actually on scene there, so if you want to direct some of those questions back to the superintendent, I haven't talked to any of the parents, but I will tell you that they've been very cooperative with us, and I appreciate their patience. How did the school, how did the school alert the parents? Because we've had actually a couple say that they found out actually from the media before they heard anything from, from the school about the actual shooting. Um, the uh, one call, we used our one call now system, and we placed a call out relatively early in the process uh, notifying families uh, once things were basically under control uh, what had occurred and you know what the situation was at that point we had a lot of help with the sheriff's department to help guide us on finding a, uh, a safe zone for parents to go to we knew we didn't want everyone to show up on campus and and basically uh, kind of congest the area and not allow law enforcement to be able to get to where they needed to be so uh, we use Lions Park as, a, as our reunification location, um, and uh, uh, that worked out really well. Uh, parents were great. You know, parents, a wide range of emotions. Um, I've had a lot of people who have stated their support and happiness with how the school handled the situation today, and uh, I'm sure there are others who were frustrated. Uh, but in a situation like this where your child's life might be at risk, uh, it's, it's hard for everyone to obviously maintain cool and calm. And, and there's a lot of emotions involved. So overall, I was very pleased and, and uh, just obviously having the help of the Sheriff's Department and our other local uh, 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 first responders that helped us a lot with the reunification, which I think is once the parent has their child and they know they're safe, I think that helps to relieve a lot of stress. A question for the prosecutor. Yes, ma'am. Has you or anyone from your office had an opportunity to speak with the suspect? And is he being, if so, is he being cooperative? I've not um, spoken with the suspect. Um, uh, no, at this point that would be inappropriate, so absolutely not. We have not spoken with the suspect. Question for you, is it possible he would be found over during the golf course? So what's going to end up happening is um, we are going to, uh, sometime between now and Monday, we're going to continue to evaluate the information that's being collected by the Sheriff's Office. Um, they are the investigators. They are collecting the information. They will provide us with the details of their investigation, um, which they are still going through themselves. Um, they're working with uh, agents from BCI, as we've discussed. That information will be evaluated by my office. We'll take a look at uh, appropriate charges, and then we'll make a decision about what charges are most appropriate. With regards to bind over, no decision has been made um, at this time, but I will tell you that that's part of the charging process. So we first need to wait and see what um, the findings, the complete findings of the Sheriff's Office are before we make final charging decisions.